If you haven't heard the news, Mediator and Automapper, which are popular libraries created by Jimmy Bogard, are going commercial. In this video, we're going to explore what this means for you, and I'll show you how to create a simple Mediator alternative with a few abstractions and some dependency injection magic. Here is the official announcement from Jimmy Bogard on his blog, where he said that he's taking Automapper and Mediator commercial. We don't know right now what the terms of the license are going to be, and I guess we're going to find this out in the future, but it doesn't seem like this is an April Fool's joke, and he explicitly stated that he posted this after April 1st, so that people would take this seriously. Now, if you've been a regular viewer of my channel, you know I'm a big fan of Mediator and I use it all the time in my videos, so I'm definitely impacted by this change. And in this video, I'll show you a simple alternative that you can use in place of Mediator. So I'm actually going to start this video the other way around by first installing Mediator and showing you how to use it. Now, I'm going to really run through this quickly, so bear with me, and let me first find the Mediator NuGet package, and I'm going to install the latest version, which is 12.5.0. So how do we actually use Mediator? Well, I'm going to create a separate class with the Mediator implementation of the flow I want to demonstrate, and then I'm going to show you how we can migrate off of it. The base abstractions in Mediator are iRequest and iRequestHandler. So what I want to do is wrap the logic that I have in this get endpoint inside of a Mediator request and respective request handler. So let's say I create a record, let's call it get movie request, and the only thing I need is the IMDB ID representing my parameter. Then I need a respective implementation of the request handler class, and I like to name this the same as my request and then append handler, and we just implement the request handler interface. Now to actually make this an I request, we need to implement a marker interface, and this also lets me define what is the return type for this request. So let's say this is a request returning a movie instance, all I need to do is implement a handle method, and I already have the implementation here, so I'm going to extract this piece of code, and let's drop it into our handler. So now I can return my movie, and you can see I'm missing the hybrid cache and the client. So I will pick these from my minimal API endpoint and inject them into the handler directly. I'll actually make this a class so that these are parameters and not properties. And then I just need to pass in the IMDB ID, which is the argument that we are using to generate the cache key, but also pass it as a value to our HTTP client. And this is basically what Mediator allows you to do. You can define a request object and the respective handler, and Mediator connects them at runtime. So how you would use Mediator is inject the iMediator service or iSender, which only allows you to send requests. Let's say I go the iSender route, then I can just say await sender, send the respective request, so we have to instantiate it. So let's create a new get movie request instance, and the only argument here is the IMDB ID, and I can also pass in the cancellation token. So Mediator then goes and finds the respective handler for this request, invokes it, and returns back the movie instance. And this was the same behavior that we had before. Now in order to achieve this, Mediator does do a bit of reflection, and we have to register some services, so I have to say builder services add Mediator, and then provide a delegate to configure this. And I can say configuration, register services from assembly containing, and I can pass in the program class to target the current assembly. So now when my application starts and I send this request, it's going to invoke the respective request handler and return back the result. And this bit of indirection is why people also dislike Mediator, but I really enjoy this type of defining my use cases inside of a single type, and Mediator just makes writing this type of application slightly simpler. Another benefit that we get is that we can now invoke our request handlers from outside an API request. For example, I can send this request from a background job, I can react to a message coming off a message queue, and then send the request to invoke the respective handler. Now, another thing that I can do here is decorate the handler with some generic behavior. So I'm going to drop in a logging pipeline behavior, and this is the abstraction that Mediator gives us called an iPipeline behavior, and it basically allows me to wrap my request handler. It's represented by this delegate here, and this allows me to introduce behavior before or after invoking the request handler. Now how you register this is back inside of our program file. We have to say add open behavior, because it's a generic one, and then I'll say type of logging pipeline behavior, and Mediator is going to wire this up with dependency injection, so that when I send the get movie request, we're first going to land inside of the pipeline behavior, and then we're going to invoke the respective handler. We can also chain multiple pipeline behaviors, creating a chain of decorators, 
and this is useful for stuff like caching, logging, introducing additional telemetry data, handling authentication and authorization if you want to do that with Mediator, and I think it's a very powerful feature. Now, I'm not going to touch on the support for publishing notifications, I just want to focus on the request and response flow that Mediator allows us to implement. And now the problem is Mediator is going commercial starting from version 13. So what are your options? Well, I wrote an article, which I'm going to leave in the description and possibly in the pinned comment below, and you can take a look at it. I outlined four options that are worth considering, and the one that I'm going to highlight here is simply you can continue using version 12. It's going to remain free from my understanding of the announcement, or another thing you could consider, and probably why you're watching this video, is an alternative. Now, I'm sure somebody is going to fork Mediator and expose another NuGet package that you can use, so go ahead and do that if that's what you want to do. But if you're looking for a simple implementation, I'm going to show you what you can do next. So let's create a new type. I'm going to call it simple mediator because I won't actually be implementing the mediator pattern. And what I want to show you here, and let me just comment all of this out so that they don't conflict with each other. And I'm just going to grab the get movie request. So let's copy that here. And I still want to have a request object, but I want to define a simple abstraction for my request handlers. So let's call this the I request handler. We'll make it generic, accepting a T request and a T response. And I'm just going to define one method inside. It's going to be async, returning a T response type. And let's call it handle with a T request argument and a cancellation token with an optional default value. So this is basically what the mediator interface looks like under the hood. So now I can grab the request handler and let's see how we would implement it with our new interface. So let me uncomment this. I'm going to import the missing types and notice that all of this just works because I use the same abstraction, but we're not using mediator. Now, in order to use this inside of our API endpoint, we have to wire this up with dependency injection. So I'll say builder services add scoped, and I'm going to register this abstraction as a scoped service. Now, I will have to comment out the mediator namespace so that I don't run into any conflicts. And now I can specify my abstraction as a service and then my concrete handler as the implementation. Instead of injecting iSender, I can now inject my handler directly. So let me update the name and now I can call the handle method pass in the request object, and I'm going to get back the same behavior. Now what's missing here is the pipeline behavior that we have with Mediator. So let's see how we can emulate this with our abstraction. And this is how you would typically implement a decorator with dependency injection. So let me rename this. I won't be needing the I pipeline behavior. Instead, I'm going to implement the I request handler interface. I'm going to call this the logging request handler, and I'm going to update a couple of things accordingly. And notice that our handle method is simpler in this case. We have our request and our cancellation token. Now, what is missing is the request handler delegate. So how are we going to call the request handler that we are decorating? Well, I'll need to inject this as another argument. Let's call it the inner handler. And now I can say inner handler handle pass in the request object and the cancellation token, and I've implemented a simple generic decorator that I can wire up with dependency injection. Now, this isn't going to be pretty. For all of this to work, I have to do some magic like this. First, I have to register the get movie request handler as a scope service. So let's say builder services add scoped get movie request handler. And then what I want to do is register this interface I request handler of get movie request returning a movie, but I'll have to use the service provider delegate. So when I want to resolve this, I'm going to return a new logging request handler, but this also has some arguments. And the first one is going to be the actual get movie request handler, which we registered as a service. And then I need to pass in the logger. So I will say service provider get required service. Let me just copy the interface that I have here and pass it in as the argument. Now I don't have access to T request and T response, but I do know the concrete values. And if I specify them, this will be registered with dependency injection. So let's actually test this out. I'm going to start the application. And if I send a get request to our endpoint, you will see that we successfully hit the breakpoint. So our application seems to be working. The handler instance is properly provided from dependency injection, and you can see that we're getting a logging request handler. Now let's try to step into the handle method 
and you will see that we go into the generic version where we can add a logging statement and now when I try to step into the inner handler we actually land in the get movie request handler which is our concrete implementation so we managed to implement the request handler response pattern if it's a pattern at all in a simple way with a couple of abstractions and I also show you how to introduce a generic decorator and you can also see that we're getting a response back in postman so I'm going to stop debugging now however the dependency injection logic isn't going to look too pretty when you want to introduce some additional decorators and this is something that Mediator does very nicely with its iPipeline behavior abstraction and to implement this yourself you would have to do some additional work although it's not too complicated. Now we could easily do this with a bit of assembly scanning and some reflection and we don't even have to reference the concrete types here. We can extract all of that information with a bit of code and then this would all look very clean. Now the one advantage that this solution has over the mediator one is we don't have indirection. We are directly referencing the request handler and we can step into the request handler immediately including any decorators. Now let me know in the comments what you think about mediator going commercial and if you'd like to see me implement custom support for the publish subscribe pattern that Mediator allows you to do with the iNotification interface. If you want to learn more about the future of .NET, I recommend that you check out this video next. Take a look at my courses if you want to improve your software architecture skills. Thanks a lot for watching this video and until next time, stay awesome.